electric cars with all okay. the storms going down. Yeah. Like how's Texas doing right now? Yeah, that's my brother. How are, how are them EVs doing down there? <laughs> not so hot. <laughs> uh, maybe they're really hot. They're, they're just really not going anywhere. The air conditioner's not working because they don't have any power. <laughs> they're super hot right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, I know my brother has two EVs, mm -hmm. and we were talking this past week, and he was like, man, I've been without power for X number of days. <laughs> and he's like, and it's right after, of course, right after I got two electric vehicles. Uh, <clears throat> so it makes you wonder, with the storms getting as, as bad as they are, and I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's on a cycle and it'll wax and wane and all that kind of stuff, but still it really exposes people who commit oh. to this new green deal, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and how impactful it's going to be to their lives. Yeah. It's the short-sightedness of a great plan. Yeah, right. Have you no. ever tried an EV? No. So I got one. I mean, I, I've ridden one. Yeah, I, so I got a Leaf back in 2014? No, 13. 2013. And I lived six miles from my house, or from work. Yeah. It was great. Drove back and forth, but I had to charge it every night. I wouldn't make it there and back. Six really? I wouldn't make it six miles there and back on one charge. I wouldn't do it. So w does the Leaf have, like, one of the batteries that the electric bicycles use or something? <laughs> so. <laughs> Maybe. Like, because like, in the Tesla, they can go, like, 400 oh, miles. Oh, yeah. When the Tesla came out, I was like, that's not, uh, wow, that's a yeah. great battery. They're pretty awesome. And I don't take anything away from the electric cars for what they do, for what they are. Yeah, I right? mean, it's a great knit. You know, I mean, it's, it's not a, a full replacement at it all. It can't be because of the, the way that we travel and interact. Now, part of this <clears throat> whole movement towards EV may be to contain or control oh, or modify the way that mm -hmm. we act yeah. um, and the way that we move around, for yeah. sure. You know? Yep. Um, but I can tell you this, it's going to be hard to put all of the 18 wheelers and I can't wait to see who's going to be the first people you on an saw, electric airplane. You saw, <laughs> did you tell me that? <laughs> no, who's going to be the first one to take that ride? <laughs> hey, we're doing good. Oh, oh dang. Oh. Everyone pedal. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of mass dropping out, like things fall out of the back of the chairs and it's pedals right. and everyone has to crank on the pedals to generate enough electricity to get a, Pedal harder. We're only at static. Yeah. Oh man. I I it, when I think about the whole EV thing, I don't know if you heard they were talking about trying to do uh, battery powered tanks for the military. <laughs> Are you making that up? No. No. <coughs> like how to lose a war? Go all EV. Yeah. How do I? How do you say you're gonna kick our butts mm -hmm. without saying you're gonna kick our butts? Introduce the electric tank and roll in with the. <laughs> that, well, that that's is sound. that's an upside. I mean, so that's a... stealth. <clears throat> stealth. Stealth would be nice. Super awesome. Don't need a lot of stealth because you... they send rounds way down range. You know, and I mean, honestly, how stealthy is the metal on those tracks going to be? <laughs> <laughs> but all you've got is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is that a real thing? Or are you joking? I, okay, so in all fairness, I'll look it up. Okay. And I will put something on the screen to either confirm or deny that that is the truth. But I, I think I heard a political talking head talking about Biden's that would plan. Be an, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. If that were a real thing, it's like... Tanks um, and airplanes. We need both of those. And to run well, I mean, I guess we got submarines, but there's nuclear subs. But what does the battery set look like in an electric tank, right? Because that thing's way heavier than a leaf. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. assume, right? Because you could pick the leaf up, right? No, no, no. It weighed. Uh, My brother had a Prius, and I swear to God, we could have picked that thing up. Together. No, Prius maybe not because the batteries. The batteries are heavy. It yeah. it weighed as much as an F-150. What? The leaf did because the battery. Yeah. Oh, okay. So let's say the frame of the car, we, me and yeah. my brother could have easily picked yes, up his Prius. Yes, yes, yes. The frame, so. you can kick that thing over. 
Yeah, I gave him so much grief over that car. I rode in it, right? And it was cool. It was quiet, <laughs> and it would turn off at lights and freak you out. Yeah, and whenever he's pumping happening. his gas, he's laughing. Right. But then he's like, now you think it's funny, and a thing would shoot open in the floorboard, and he's like, now kick. You know, like front <laughs> loose, so, so I had to help half the time, so that wasn't quite We're as fun. Over! It's so quiet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's quiet well, until you get you blisters. Gotta, hey, you got to give me some new shoes. Yes. <laughs> also, I wanted to circle back around to something that we talked about in another episode um, about um, women choosing the bear. Yeah. So there's more to that story than that. It's not just that women would choose a bear to be in the woods. If the, it's if they had to choose between a dude that they didn't know, uh-huh. like a creeper dude, and a bear. A creeper they, dude. Well, not necessarily. Well, just I don't, somebody they don't know. Just someone they don't know, an unfamiliar yeah. male. Unfamiliar male. Right? Yeah. Because there are inherent risks involved with that, and you don't know which way it's going to go. I still make the argument that I'd take that risk over the bear, because the bear, you know the outcome. Right. 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 Um, with the other one, the dude may build you like a, a hammock, a house. a house in the top of a tree, <laughs> hunt for you. You know what I'm saying? It could yeah. go the other way, too. But with the bear, you, you will know be you're eaten. going to get eaten. <laughs> or at least mauled and left for something right. else to eat you. But I thought that it was important that we took a moment to clarify that it's not just choosing a bear over a man any, any man, man any man right yeah, yeah. it's an unknown, unknown man. man okay that's fair yeah. enough fair Cause, enough because my wife was like i would definitely choose you over a bear honey like I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's very sweet I'm <laughs> right yeah but i'm also paying her rent so she, i'm basically paying her to say nice things to me every month you know <laughs> well all right fine you you met your quota of nice <laughs> nice things, things. No, it's quotaless. There's no quota. <laughs> it has to be virtually all nice things. All the time. But I think that's true with any man. Most men, right? They need to, that constant uh, oh, reassuring yeah. Affirmation. and stuff like that. Yes, yeah. yes. Are you familiar with the five love languages? Yes. So, <clears throat> I don't know which one. I, I don't think you can limit it to five. Or just one of the five. Let me rephrase that. I don't know that you can limit it to one of the five. But I will say that I think for the majority of men, words of affirmation is always closest to the top. Wrong. Not for you at all? No. I Not like... from your wife? Well, I love the words of affirmation. Okay, I'm, so... I'm multilingual. See, so. now that's... So you receive love however love is given. Right. I can say there that. Are, there's one of the languages that I'm really fond of. Well, okay. Yeah, you're right. Because I'm a boy. We do know that one is always at the top. But that yeah. one's always kind of a given. Right. I'm just so saying, it's always the two that you say for the sake of accuracy. <laughs> I don't want anybody saying that. Hey, All you, right. So the not. oversight, the oversight was. Think about this. I go home. My no, wife tries I to know. hold me to them words of yeah. affirmation and tell me how much she likes no, me all the time. No, no, and I'm going to have to be like, no, I need something else. There's Chris another, there's another language you are not speaking right now. <laughs> Chris was wrong is all I'm going to say. <laughs> right. He does not That's, speak for both uh, of us. Uh, nope. 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 Yeah. I don't know what he's got. In that cigar over there, yeah. but it's sometimes our opinions are contrarian, <laughs> right? I apologize. I do stand corrected. That one I don't even think needs to be okay. grouped into one of the options because it's so an understood. Four, four love languages. languages. <laughs> one need. <laughs> exactly. So but yeah, words of affirmation are a big one. Pump me up, you know, tell me it's gonna be yeah. okay. And I, it sounds kind of counterintuitive, I think, because we're the ones the women are looking to to say, or not all women, but my woman is looking for me to tell her everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Keep her bubble intact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, truth is, we like to hear, you're awesome. You're the greatest. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Good absolutely. grief. I respect you. Holy yep. cow. Yeah. I respect you. If you are a woman and you want to wow a man, tell him you respect him. If you're my wife and you tell me you respect me, though, I'm going to ask you what's wrong. I'm not going to lie. Don't do it in a way like I respect you and then go into some rant on what's wrong or what they need to do for you. But if you legitimately want to pierce a guy's armor or whatever, let him know with full sincerity that you respect him and just watch what happens. Yeah. I saw a video on, uh, on the, you know, the, the interweb the other day. And it was, um, uh, you know, like one of those little short things on, but it was bottom line what it was. It was, um, a, it was, a, it was a pair of ice skaters mm -hmm. and it was, uh, they have been partners since 
they were like little kids, mm -hmm. like little kids. They showed them when they were little. And it, every cut scene was when they were doing the interview. She just looked at him kind of like starry eyed. Da, da, da. Yeah. And I was like, I love that so much. Yeah. Right? Cause I was like, man, you know, I kind of feel like that's how my wife looks at me when she's not hogging up the limelight, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, my wife is great. She treats me great. But I, I just, that spoke to me yeah. that all the time. She's looking at him with those eyes of, I am respecting what you're saying and listening to what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? I thought yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, that is awesome. Electric tanks, that really blows my, blows my mind. And then... I'm 95... I, I gotta look it up. Google it right now. I gotta now. look it up. Well, let's do the... The iPhone is real quick for this. Do you have iPhone? Mm-hmm. So you can just do Siri. Hey, Siri. I know we haven't spoken in a while. <laughs> but can you tell him he's pretty? But I really need you right now. Hey, Siri. Uh -huh. It's me again. Sorry, there is nothing to repeat. Whoa, she did Ooh, not. She's not taking your jokes at all. All right, fine. <clears throat> I don't even know what I'm... Uh, hey, Siri. Are there electric tanks? The tank's power plant supplies kinetic energy to move the tank and electric power via a generator to component. So, of course, every, every <laughs> vehicle has an electric component, right? Mm -hmm. Hang on, hang on. That's not what it is. EV tanks. Do generals dream of electric tanks? Of express the uh, express concerns are electric tanks. <laughs> U.S. Army's electric tanks on hold as battery technology <laughs> develops. <laughs> working on it. We're working on it. That's so dumb. For now, now if they're doing it and they're on the brink of creating some kind I mean, of like super battery, like uh, a week long battery. That's that's feasible. Not in war, because there's no charging stations, bro. No, no, no. Recharging uh, tanks that can come in and recharge. To where they got to drive all the way back to the house? No. Where? Do they you have? Drag... Do you have? Do you have refueling tanks that come out and get diesel out there? Yeah. Same thing. But what? Did, so then you got to drag generator sets around. No, no, no. You don't have. You've mm -hmm. got battery swap outs. Diesel powered. Go on diesel powered vehicles to go out to charge and then you got to go back so then what would be the benefit of the ev tank there's no there's no there's no feasibility. you do it for me man you I you i don't know it's you dumb. do it for me so that that is hilarious to, for you to tell me <laughs> that you're gonna on a battlefield on a battlefield you're gonna have a what recharging they talk about right now with evs is that they have to build the infrastructure and if we can get people to commit to the infrastructure build blah 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 and then EVs will be a cinch, right? That's the whole thing. They're trying to get people to finance the infrastructure. So when no. you're going to war, you don't... Have infrastructure. You don't have infrastructure. You're destroying infrastructure. Yeah. All <laughs> Russia's got to do to beat you is go like, I'm not going to put chink charging stations anywhere <laughs> in my country. You're hosed. I'm sorry. We, we got beat. They didn't have a blink. <laughs> I'm just saying. It doesn't make any sense. Blink um, is a charging station. The only reason I know that is because I had a leaf for a year. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know what he just said. A Blink. I, no, I thought it was the, after the band Blink-182 broke up and it was just the lead singer. Oh. A Blink. is a dumb joke. Cut that out. <laughs> I, don't, I was going to flip this open and blow at it to cool down the <laughs> <laughs> You just burned your face off, bro. Cool. Nice hat. <laughs> What you got in store for us next? <laughs> Do you have any home remedies for face third degree facial burns in your um... market? It as a new form of Botox. You get really puffy lips. Yeah, in Nicaragua. Nicaragua, like Nicaragua. You ever watch Beavis and Butthead back in the day? Yeah. Oh my God. I'll tell you what's funny. My grandpa actually used <clears throat> used to watch Beavis and Butthead. Really? Tim Preacher. 
<laughs> he was a tent preacher, and he'd turn on Beavis and Butthead. He'd turn it on. I don't think he ever really watched it. Yeah. I think he liked the shock factor, the, you know, <gasps> of yeah. what is somebody going to say about this? Because he'd show me, and he'd think it was funny to show it to me, but then he'd go to sleep. Right. Like, he'd sit in his chair. He'd turn it on. He's like, isn't this funny? <laughs> 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 I'm right around the corner from doing that. But I do that with my kids too. I, I not anymore mm -hmm. because I've kind of changed my modus operandum with my children, especially as they've gotten old enough to be little people and uh, you can recognize that they're absorbing things. But I used yeah. to watch South Park while my kids were around and all kinds of stuff. They loved it. Uh, I think that they were wowed by the animated Animation. part mm -hmm. of it and it's little cartoons and stuff. So it's a mm -hmm. cartoon to them. Um, now they can really understand. I, w I would say appreciate, but I, they probably do appreciate, they appreciate all the horrible it, but things. Yeah. But I don't want them to have the appreciation yeah. for that stuff uh, anymore. So definitely have modified that. It's it's funny how much things have changed since oh. you had little kids. You think it's such a toil? Like right now, you know, it, you may think it's such a toil when you have little kids, but after you get they get older, then the responsibilities that you have to them change. Yeah. Right. And <clears throat> oddly, your amount of freedom decreases the more that they know. I get that. Right? I get Is that. It, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's a weird. No, that makes sense. I thing. agree. Um, you know, whenever I was a kid, or whenever I was a kid, when my kids were younger, I could play video games. Not a problem. Now, nope, not at all. Yeah, I still do. I'm a horrible Cause person. Because of, of, you've got some boys, so yeah. it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, you know, my my daughter was scared of Swiper I don't in know Dora. Is. Remember Dora? Okay, so Dora, Dora the, Explorer. the Explorer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Swiper, the fox. Okay. Who would come and take things. Okay. She would have nightmares about Swiper. I was like, I I was not prepared for this. I I was anticipating some normal things, like the spider that's dropping down from the ceiling right now. That would be potentially scary to a child. Not Swiper. Not Swiper. That's a pretty awesome looking spider right there, isn't it? Can you see I it? I do see it, yeah. I, you see why I was <clears> like, <throat> what's on me? Where is it? Yeah, so but, many in here. But we, we found that one. It was pretty little. Mm -hmm. So I don't even, even if it had been venomous, I don't think that we were in threat. In I don't threat think that it could have bit. Yeah. Not through those tough, calloused, man working hands. <laughs> I do have a new callus. It's going to start. Is it a callus? It's no. It's a pop blister. But what are this, you doing to get a blister on that fingertip? Riding mm. my riding lawn mower with my child asleep in one arm. Riding the mower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the riding lawn mower, as you can tell, really has seen better days. Yeah. Uh, and so the screw that holds in the steering wheel likes to come out. On a regular basis, so I'm so you're a, gonna be just cruising and it'll, yeah, the just, steering wheel comes off. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, not all the way off. Just that thing will start to come out, and then I yeah. catch it before it does. Because I may be working in the automotive industry, but I don't know for sure that I'm gonna be able to get that thing back on the right way. Right. <laughs> know your limitations. I heard a rumor that you like camping. Mm. That's a lie. Is I hate camping. Me too. <laughs> I hate I it with a passion. So much. I think it's a terrible idea. I do too. <laughs> I'm like, I did all of that in oh, service goes. of up. my country, right? I, I've done my time sleeping in the woods. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's zero value to it. Like, um, <laughs> Absolutely from, no value whatsoever. There's none. <laughs> I mean, like, because you can be close to nature during the daytime. Yeah. And if you want to go see what nature's like at night, go out at night go, and then come back inside. Come back inside and sleep inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's like how I feel about it. <clears throat> who no, did but, you... I'm guessing it was my wife who mentioned that I hate camping. Well, not to me, but it, that's how I got oh, back okay. through, okay. through yeah, the yeah. thing. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, point. I'm going to have to ask him about that. So Because someone else said, I asked her apparently, um, hey, would you, I know you don't want a tent camp. Would you be interested in like an uh, RV? No, like a, oh. a, a shanty <laughs> camp. And it doesn't have a bathroom, but the bathroom's like across the street or across the 
walkway or something so it has a detached bathroom i don't know if it's a community bathroom or if it's a bathroom somewhere. i was like no to all of it i am out. no like an rv i can make you know an still, argument bro, i'm like that. Uh, okay i can see that like if you wanted to go do nature stuff and then you go to nature, nature you're able to completely but now yourself. with the rvs man you got to get into one of these camps I right? know, and that's so a, stupid. You, you rent a slip I, uh, in an RV camp, and that's like a trailer park. It, it, yes. Right? It's yes. not really camping. I don't need neighbors if I'm going to go camping. Right. Like, you're going out to be in nature, not to be surrounded by suburbia, right. who is also trying to come out there and go glamping. Because otherwise, it's just a lifestyle, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, you're just saying, hey, we're going to live in this cramped little quarters <laughs> so that we can all hang out on our concrete pad with our awning pulled off from the side of the van and we're going to cook on a hibachi. <laughs> we're going right? to test everybody's patience. Exactly. And just push everybody's buttons. But I mean, I've even thought about uh, like doing like a cross country trip in an RV. I think mm -hmm, that would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the downside is you still have to find a place to park that bad boy, which is usually an RV camp. Or something like that. Now, I say all of this without knowing anything about RVing or what's required or where you do your gray water dump or anything. I know it's not about that. Well, but. Uh, I mean, you can park in truck stops. Can you? And sleep there? Truckers do it all the time. Yeah, but it's truck stop. I guess you could. But I'm saying to, for nature stuff, if I'm going to the Grand Canyon, I'm not going to go to a truck stop. I guess I could. I mean, what difference does it make, right? A rest area. Yeah. I'm resting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't don't i thought that if you fall asleep in a rest area that they'll come and make you move like i've you know pulled up and i don't know that they you do have to I rest mean, awake i don't think <laughs> that defeats like the you're, purpose you're like you're to, i'm sorry you cannot stay awake so you need to be on the road you can prop your feet up homie but you're gonna need to stay <laughs> conscious no the whole point of them is so that you can stop and take a rest yeah but because like at night whenever i'm driving I, all the rest areas, even like the pull off to the side, not like with a full restroom and everything, but just the pull off rest areas, loaded with trucks. Right. Loaded with trucks. And they're sleeping. Sleep. They're sure. all asleep, yeah. But they have some rest areas that say um, no, no resting. Overnight. No, no, not no resting. <laughs> like no overnight um, parking or something like that. But if you're in the vehicle. <laughs> Yeah, but it's still like you're not allowed to stay there longer than X number of hours. I think it's if there are any park around. rangers out there or anybody who happens to be in this field, please let us know because this is really, really interesting. DPS, you need Highway Patrol, Department of Public Safety. That's who monitors rest stops on highways and byways. So whoever does that, right? that's who we need to contact. Yeah. yeah. Comment below and let us know if we're um, <laughs> even in the ballpark. At thing. all. We're completely off. <laughs> right. it's literally we, we have no information and we formulate <laughs> like the most intricate intricate opinions and, and take and, a stance counter like arguments argue against yeah, about it. something we don't even know it's real <laughs> i wonder if this is what fiction writers do i would imagine i don't know i can't even say yeah. it would be another venture down yeah make a decision i yeah but a lot of people do that you know what i mean a lot of people will um <clears throat> Here the, you know, I learned in therapy a long time ago that whenever we are, when our brains are absent of information about a subject, mm -hmm. we have a tendency to fill in with the worst possible case scenario, and it's done. Your brain does it in an effort to jade you against any potential outcome that ranges from the worst all the way to anywhere, anything above that, right? So it's always the worst case scenario. It's always the worst case scenario if you don't know, and you do it subconsciously, right? You're doing it to protect yourself. I do it consciously, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you even will, I go you even call deeper. Ahead. Yeah, you'll call ahead and be like, "Hey, I'm just gonna let you know." <laughs> um, uh, no, there's a worst case phenomenon. scenario party for two, please, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Scenario, Mr. Scenario, your table's ready. <laughs> so, yeah, but people do this, and so I, I find a lot of times in um, groups or whatever, people we'll have a partial experience. They'll come back and share it with the group. And then everybody does what we do is we just collaborate on the worst possible outcome and take a stand on it. And then we all band together and we're going to be like, no, this is not, we're not going to stand for that. And we're like, I don't even know that that's the thing that we have to stand against yet. How did, how did this happen? Like, that escalated quickly. <laughs> did you ever see the movie burn after reading? Mm, no, I'm going to say no. <clears throat> it's uh, it's a pretty funny movie. Um, 
someone may say it's got some dark humor in it, but it's that kind of thinking of where did you even come up with this as an idea? I won't, I won't spoil it because it's really, if you can appreciate that type of humor, it's worth watching. Yeah. Yeah. And is it an old movie? Older. Early yeah. 2000. So I'm going to have to pay $1.99 for this thing on some platform. Uh, it may be free somewhere. Maybe. You think some of the stuff that's way, way out of syndication. So let's see. Um, that, that it's going to be free. For sure it's going to be free. And they're like, no, it costs $1.99 per episode. Right? You're like, man, that's Burn from the 1940s. I should be able to get all of the episodes for like five bucks. No, folks. Oh, that's not... Su well, I guess that is super old, because that dude was popular back when I was super young. Who, George Clooney? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's on Netflix. That's what I said. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Ethan Cohen's the director. I don't know if you know Ethan Cohen. It's it's uh, pretty funny. If you like John Malkovich, John Malkovich is in it. Really? Yeah. Do you like John Malkovich? Yeah, he has a weird cadence. He's a he's unique. And he's talking, funny. yeah. i tell you, one of my favorite things that I, he ever said was... <laughs> was in Deepwater Horizon. Did you ever see Deepwater Horizon? I did a long time ago. So he's working. <laughs> he's supposed to be doing this southern accent, right? <laughs> and and he's trying. He's working for uh, BP or whoever the oil company is. And he's trying to convince them that they need to start drilling, right? <clears throat> well, the tests keep coming back, and they're inconclusive. And so they're not confident that they can start drilling safely. And he says, let's do, the, you know, let's drill, let's do another test, let's blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like, I don't know, we need to call so-and-so to come in here. And he's like, and he looks around and he goes, is there a man among you? Is there an adult who? <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to do a Louisiana <laughs> accent or yeah. something. I don't know what it was, but it was just so But he great. can't beat the John Malcolm. Uh, no, he can't himself. get out of it. He can't yeah. get out of it. Is there, is there a man among you? Yeah. Is there an adult who? <laughs> <laughs> it's the who. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know what I realized is coming through? Left the no? fan on. There it is. Oh, we've got to start yeah. over. <clears throat> no, it's all right. We can't change it now. Because it'll, <laughs> <mess up. laughs> it'll be like, it'll just sound like, hey, did something change on the audio? Everybody wakes it'll be, up. It'll be like a commercial. The white noise goes away, so they wake up. It'll be Where like when I? the audio comes on, the commercial on the audio comes on, it's like six times louder than whatever you were watching. That's one of my favorite <laughs> things about the internet. Seriously. That? Yeah. That so, it's always ten, so loud? It's always so loud. You could be like watching something quietly in the bed next to your wife or something, <laughs> and then they're selling you shoes or an RV trip or a... You know, a hearing aid. So yeah, a hearing aid, <laughs> which is offensive. I try not to be offended. I try not to be offended. Right? That they're trying to sell you a hearing aid. Yeah. My wife gets hearing aid mailers all the time. <laughs> but are all you, the time. Are you signing her up for them? Because yeah, I was signing mine wife up for those anyways. Well, you never listen to me. I assume that your hearing was broken. This is gonna fix our relationship. What? I don't need hearing aids. So you can hear me then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this was your out. I was giving you an yeah, out. Yeah. I love you, honey. I was <laughs> I was setting it up for you. And you and you failed. Oh man. Talk about failing. Okay. Uh so <clears throat> I'll preface this with some of the instructions that I got when I first started working on tires. The very first week, they had me repairing tires. Oh, okay, cool. That's cool. On a diesel a semi, you've got the steer tire, which is the very, very front. You've got the drive tires, which are the eight. two axles. Yeah. yeah, and total of eight tires on the back of the tractor. Tractor's the truck. Now, the semi has got just the um, trailer tires. That's all they are. You can repair trailer tires and drive tires you cannot repair a steer tire why because that's going to be steering the vehicle so if the patch happens to fail uh, catastrophic right absolutely catastrophic you just don't and there's it. no additional tires on those axles right on the other ones there's a well and it's not steering right either yeah. you know what i mean so like if you blow one on the back it's not going to You're dragging determine, a blown right, tire right 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 
versus, oh, there goes my <laughs> the driver steer and I'm going over this way, <laughs> right. you know. Um, you can repair them and put them on a trailer tire, like right. on the trailer, but you can't put them back on the steer. Okay. Very first week, I get this information. Get it ingrained in my head. I've got an emergency call that comes in, going to work on the truck. They tell me that they need a drive tire. So I go to the shop, I pick up the drive tire, and I get all the way to the lot, and I pull up, and it's a steer tire. <sighs> you got to be kidding me. It's another 45-minute round trip to go back to the shop and then come back here before I can even start working on it. So I call my headquarters to let them know, hey, you guys called in a drive tire. It's actually a steer tire. You're going to have to put this work order out two more hours on top of what you already planned because I can't do anything with it. I don't have right. this tire with me. <clears throat> so they said, okay, I'm on the phone with them. While I'm on the phone with them, I get this bright idea. Oh, why don't I just repair this one? I didn't even think. It's a steer tire. I just thought, oh, I, I'm going to get reamed in the, in the shop whenever I get back on, you know, the next morning and tell them I had to come back here to get it. I could hear them saying, why didn't you just repair it? That's what I heard go through my head. So all other rational thinking went out the window at that moment. So I start repairing it, repaired the steer tire, put it back on. Didn't even think about it. The next morning, I'm going through this story with them, telling my supervisors. As soon as I get to the part where I said, why don't I just repair it? They both looked at me and froze. And they said, you did what? And I said, yeah, I was thinking, oh, no. Because you already had been told not to do that? Yeah. M months ago when I first started and I just I, I froze I was like you've got to be kidding me you've got to be kidding me oh no so I went I had to go back to the lot to try and find the truck couldn't find the truck they weren't there tried to call their dispatch found out where the truck is when is it going to be back they don't know my boss was gone he was off on vacation this was on Friday so I am just dreading that moment whenever he gets back. Oh, no, what am I going to do? I spent all weekend dreading it, thankful that Monday came because I could finally talk to him. Because I don't like to hide behind my mistakes. I like to admit them. I like to face them. I don't let other people typically find out. I'm going to go let them know if it impacts them, if I'm supposed to, you know what I mean, like with my boss. Right. So I was ready to tell him because I'm like, I just got to... You got to know this. You don't want him to find out. And I don't want you to have to come sure. to me and ask right. me, why didn't you tell me about this? Yeah. Or why did anything, you know, no, I'm bringing this to you. I made a mistake. He was off on Monday. <laughs> so I had another night of just dread and sheer terror. Well, I went in today and sure enough, I, I, <laughs> I walk into the office and I, I start walking into his office and I go to shut the door and I'm like, I got a confession to make. He's like, is it about that steer? Yeah. He goes, yeah, I got told last week. It's wonderful news to get on vacation. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was worried they were going to let me go immediately. That's how serious it is. Oh, really? Yeah. So what came of it? You don't know that truck's just kind of floating out there now? We're hoping that he's going to come in somewhere. Now, the other guy in the shop who's been doing this stuff for like 30 years and even my supervisor my boss told me this today he says nine out of ten times it'll be fine it'll be fine nine All out of more ten than nine, out, nine of 10. out of ten yeah it's just that one out of ten isn't worth the risk yeah so you just don't repair it. you just don't do it so you can you did i hear you earlier you say you could repair it and put it on the back yeah 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 but so when you get a new tire are they yeah. all are all new tires drive tires or, I steer mean, are tires. All steer tires. All new. All steer tires have to be new tires. But all are all new tires. Steer tires, or no. is there a steer tire and a pool no? Tire? There's a steer tire. There's a drive tire, and, and there's a trailer tire. But you can use a repaired steer tire for one of the others. For typically, you won't have them on the drives. Okay. You can put a drive tire, a steer tire, or a trailer tire on, on anything else. On the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. On the trailer or on the drives. Okay. They're all, those are all interchangeable. Right. Most people don't just because the drive tire, you're going to need a little bit more meat. It's actually doing the work. 
You see what I'm tournament. doing here, right? Is I'm yeah. learning a little yeah. bit in case my job goes left. Yeah, you know where to go. Gonna you, come you to you and be like, it, "Hey, man. hey, they took a banker." I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm a shoe in. <laughs> You're yeah. set. Yeah. You worked with tools before. Yeah, you yeah. you know how to do things. I proficiently I do not drill through my fingers. You know, it's a experience. Now I say that I shouldn't have said that. It's experience. I, I knew you universe. were. I knew you were gonna uh, do that one. Actually, whenever I started talking about it, I could see you looking at your fingernails going. Yeah. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about that again because that was an experience <laughs> for me, right? I'm, it was much more of an experience for you, but it was definitely an experience. It for was me. memorable, yeah, to say the least. Well, yep. it's cool that you don't like camping. Mm -hmm. um, I don't either. I did a lot of bivouacking whenever I was in the military, right? You have to go out and live in the woods for a couple of weeks, play war What's games. What's bivouacking? We're camping, but it's, what's it called bivouacking for? Don't know what it stands for? I do not. Hey, Let's... Siri. Mm -hmm. Good to talk to you again. What's bivouacking? Okay. <laughs> she doesn't like it whenever you try to be social with her, dude. You do not have a good rapport with your Siri. <laughs> she said okay. How perfect. I never use her. I don't use Siri. That's why I don't use Siri. Huh. Well, it just, when we <laughs> called it bivouacking, it said, the more she I say said, it, the worse said, it words she sounds. Said, she said, okay. okay. She's like, yeah, I'm not, not going to do that. <laughs> but we had okay. to go out in the woods and dig hasty fighting positions and, mm. and wait for our drill sergeants to come in and try to attack us and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So, um, I got, and sleep in the rain and you get a half tent shelter and you have to find a buddy to, or build a lean to and try to stay dry and all that stuff, dig a trench around you where you're going to be laying on the ground so that the water will run off and go into the trench and not you. saturate the ground mm -hmm. underneath you. So there's a lot of cool things that you learn about yeah. uh, survival it, Survival in the event that you need it. So I don't think that it's altogether a bad thing, but to do it recreationally, I don't understand that. I guess that's the part that um, with camping that I don't understand is the recreational aspect of it. Now, that said, I'm also not a rock climber, obviously, or, um, <laughs> you know, a hiker. I, a hiker. Yeah. Yeah. You love hiking? Not at all. I have a friend that loves hiking, gets great photos and stuff, but I'm just like, I, one, I don't want to walk through the woods, definitely don't want to do it with 40 pounds of camera equipment. You know, I wonder what I would be like now, because, like, I work out in the sun all the time now, and it's hot. And my body is acclimating a little bit differently. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I've got sweat pouring off me, like, all the time during the day. Right, but your body knows how to cool itself. Yeah, 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 but I'm, not, but I'm not really miserable. Yeah. Um, you know, whenever we went to the zoo, I had my kids on my shoulders walking around the whole time. My wife even commented on how, you know, something's different. You didn't complain once, and we Big were out in the sun man. all day. And Big you know, man. really, really, it's not a matter of whining, is what it was. And she's like, You didn't whine today. That's yeah, <laughs> wow. So, she didn't say it like that. That's she really, one of her love language words of affirmation. That's it. That words about you didn't whine. You didn't whine, man. Well, pump me up, honey. Whoa, man. I'm ready to take on the world. <laughs> God, you are such you're you're like um, a scissor lift from my heart, honey. Right? You just put me right up in the air. Yeah. You sure know how to talk to a man. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious what your thoughts are on the trial. The trial. Yeah. There was a little trial that was going on. Um, somebody huh. you might have heard of. Uh, Who was it? President, actually. Was it? Yeah. Wasn't Taft, was it? No, no, he's good. He's Howard Taft. No, um, w my thoughts on the trial are... I think his trial was getting out of the bathtub. Yeah. Because <laughs> he didn't make it. <laughs> wow. wow. Didn't think I'd pull that one out, did you? That was nice. He didn't think he'd that get out nice. either. <laughs> That's crazy. No, but about the trial, I, don't, I haven't been following it all intently, I'll be honest with you, but of course you can't not see headlines and... Yeah. read an article here or there and you know i've read things from both sides of the political spectrum right um obviously you got the the people that are republican are talking about how oh, it's a, a railroad show a witch hunt and all that stuff and then you've got the other sides going like oh he's a hardened criminal da, da, da. 
when you look into it at all, they start, you know, in every article, they'll tell you what it's really about, what it is. And, and I've heard some really weird things that, um, you know, like everything that he did would not have been a felony unless it's in the attempt to commit another crime. And then there's weird things that the, the, um, they said, okay, here's three different crimes that the guy could have committed as a secondary crime. And then you think that everyone would have to agree on the crime. Did you tell me this? I think mm-hmm. you're the one that told me this. So it's gospel to me now, just so you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's one of my interpretations of the I don't know. Of the Maybe trial. I told you. So it certainly has influenced some of the thought. But I heard other things today, too, that blew my mind. But they don't all have to agree on what the crime is, the secondary crime right. is that he committed. They can just be split on it. So that's one thing I think is extremely weird. And then the other thing that I heard was that um, usually they have to have all 12 jurors agree 100%. Yep. And in this case, they didn't. They only required 50% of the jurors. So that's odd, right? The second, the, the, the <clears throat> non-felonies being upgraded to felonies and not really knowing what the secondary crime was, that's one weird thing. Mm-hmm. Then the other thing um, that I just mentioned about not having to have all of the jurors be fully committed to it. And then the other thing was there was the judge, supposedly, that was the judge on the trial campaigned or something and, a, and said and his whole thing was he made a promise that he was going to I'm gonna pros- get him i'm gonna get him i'm gonna get him and so like when you factor all of just those three things together right um it seems very um interesting it seems like that that justice is not being served justice is not blind right it's not blind that's true yeah yeah yeah. It's supposed to be. Apparently, it's an eighty-year-old man with glasses. But it's, uh... <laughs> he doesn't see great, but he definitely can see. <clears throat> what do you think? What's your opinion on the trial and the way the things have gone down? You know, I think that my well, I'll say this: when it was done, I reached out to my wife and told her he was guilty on all thirty-four counts. She said, what was it all about? I didn't think, you know, I didn't know how it was really progressing. I said, honestly, I didn't follow that much because I didn't think that it would go through. It was so absurd whenever I initially heard about it. I was like, this is stupid. There's no way. This is going to be one of the, another one of those trials that just is dismissed because there's not enough conclusive evidence. There's not enough meat to the, you know, charges to have any weight or merit. or It, it was a waste of everybody's time. So for the fact that it came through the way that it did, the fact that it took the jurors nine hours, just nine hours, it was very reminiscent of the OJ trial to me. Right. Which is, this wasn't a trial. They had in their mind what they wanted to do from the get-go. They had an outcome and they just orchestrated And they just it to get did to the, the play outcome. to make it look mm-hmm. like this is legal, everything's good, this is what hmm. we say. So is it going yeah. to, um, has it changed your mind on? No, I don't think it changed my mind. I think that I was already clear on what I was leaning towards. Right. Now, you know, last time, last election, I didn't vote. Um, I just didn't really, I wasn't confident in either one, honestly. Um, I'd come from more of, well, I grew up Republican, household was Republican, and then I got wooed by the Democratic, we care for people mantra, because I care for people, and I wanted to help people, and I thought that it was a good thing, and then I got completely jaded with the crap that goes on with the Democratic Party, so this time I most definitely will go Republican. Right. Um not even ashamed of it. I think that the the state of our country, the the absolute defilement of what the public office is supposed to be has just been appalling. Absolutely mm-hmm. appalling. I am so frustrated that we don't have somebody better. And I actually I watched a, a TikTok yesterday of a rally that was held in Great Britain. Right. 
where they were calling and chanting and celebrating for Trump to please, America, please elect Trump. The world needs Trump. Our message, our message to Donald Trump and the United States and every American who's watching this, your election in November is far bigger than your country. Okay? Donald Trump is needed in this world to bring back peace. The leadership is needed to save the West. All of our countries are being flooded. They are destroying our cultures. They are bringing us down. It's an attack on the West. There's only one person who's going to stop it. You have the opportunity in November with these legends. Really? We are in shambles because of the leadership that the United States has just botched. Right. So do you think that the world needs Trump? Or do you think that... um, the affliction of the of our nation and the world is really more around what we already have not necessarily that trump trump is the answer like you know i had someone a doctor tell me one time i was like oh i have a headache and and so i take ibuprofen and they said do you think that you have a headache because of a lack of ibuprofen in your body and that was just kind of profound to me at the time so do you think that it's we need trump we we're suffering because of a lack of trump or we're suffering from what we are ingesting politically i would say it's the latter i'm not saying that trump doesn't present a potential path back right so i get what you're saying how do you resolve that issue without a leader who wants to change it well um, you can i'm just and but there are Surely there are other leaders to this, not just Trump. I'm just saying it's not a lack of oh, Trump. Oh, right, right, right. The no, world, no, 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 no. You know, um, I don't think he's the savior. I right. think I think that he is the best one that we have right now. He's certainly, yeah. And, I, and now, I think he speaks for a lot of Americans, too. And I mean, the way that we desperate, think. desperate yeah. for him because it has, it, we've not had leadership. Yeah. I have an admission, too. I also used to be a Democrat yeah. um, as an adult because... Mm-hmm. Um, I do believe in like some social programs to help people that are less needy than ours. I think that we've gotten ourselves somehow into a, a world that that is abused and stuff. But you know, as a child, I've been on social programs with my mom and stuff, and they really helped. Yeah. And and as we moved out of certain eras where <clears throat> women were able to get out and stand on their own and get out of relationships they didn't need to be in, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's some of those social programs helped that. Now, that stands in contrast to keeping families together and all that stuff, but sometimes families don't need to stay together for safety reasons and stuff like that. So those things are awesome, and I was into the Democrat thing, much like you. Hey, let's save the world. Let's be kind to people. Let's help each other. Let's all work together. And it just seems that it's moved so far. The needle is so so far far left. And even there's no middle anymore is what I'm saying. No, it's not. And and even the things, the programs that are – disguised as wanting to help others have their own agenda right. and they exploit those. Right. That's the thing that frustrates me more than anything. Right. Like with all of these agendas that you get coming out, Democrats say, Hey, we're for you. We're for you. We're for you. This month is a prime example of that this month. And I know this is a touchy subject to go into because it is this month, but I, I get so angry at the people who are in the community celebrating this month being the spokespeople for the government who is only exploiting them, who is out to use their identity, what they feel p- proud and passionate about, to, to somehow twist them to be their proponent and help push their own agenda because they don't care about you. That's the thing right. that's so sad is they don't care about you. You think that the government is behind you in, in specifically with the Democratic Party. You think they're behind you because they're pushing these um, normally what used to be socially unacceptable ideas and things like that. They're not. They have another agenda and they're just using you because you are a loud spokesperson who is passionate because you're 
it matters to you. It's very personal to you. So you have skin in the game. They don't. And they're exploiting you for that. And yeah. that angers me to no end. Right. They're exploiting all of us, right? They're cutting us into groups and 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 hitting on those chords mm -hmm. for those different groups, all the different groups, right? Um, to get them riled up, things that make them uncomfortable and say, and then pointing at the other group and going, it's their fault. It's because of them. It's because of their position, because of their passion. Yeah. Because, and I think, I do honestly believe in my heart of hearts that we can all live together peacefully and we can all live together in harmony. <clears throat> now, of course, you've got some groups that are just not going to tolerate that, right? Like there are some hardcore religious hardliners that it's never going to be okay right. to co-exist right. co with mm -hmm. another uh, group of folks. <clears throat> and that's unfortunate. But I think for the most of the world, I think that we can. I think exploitation is horrible, but it goes on everywhere. An important thing for that I think a lot of people probably don't realize is when we talk about the government or the company that you work for, my company X, there is no such entity as that, yeah. right? That's not a conscious entity. It is a collection of Everybody with their right. own agendas, yep. everyone trying to get ahead. Same thing in the government, right? We think that the idea of electing an official to go up and be our representative sounds great. Works great in student councils, right? And while, while we're teaching all of this stuff and maybe the old in the old Greek uh, communities, it worked great as well because everyone cared about each other and we all really needed each other to uh, succeed and to, and to live, right? But now that everything is kind of just on demand, Right. Yeah. It's really easy to, to get to a point where you don't feel like you need anybody else. And so it's very self-centric. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining B. Ryan and I for another night in our lounge here in the garage. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, you should subscribe. It's great to have on in the background, as B. Rye said, even his coworkers want to learn some new slang. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you get the new notification when the videos come out. Also, if you like the content, give us a thumbs up. Put something down in the comment section. Share it on social media. And we'll see you next time when we can share a cigar and change the world. All right, so this is what we're testing right now. New equipment because we want to make sure that we can keep going live for you longer. And my camera only wanted to record for 30 minutes. So I had to get a media capture device to bypass that stupid little setting. Because you can't go into the camera and change it. It's set for life. But when we connected this thing to the computer so I can start recording everything, it started giving me problems. How many people heard you just say, go longer than 30 minutes and panicked? <laughs> unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. <laughs> I'm not saying that the videos will go longer than 30, although the last one did. Yeah, it was awesome, though. It might go longer, but the actual capturing this moment, I don't like being limited to 30 minutes. Because not only does it limit it for 30 minutes, it doesn't tell you that it shuts off. Right. So you just keep going. We had like an hour and a half last time. Last hour was not recorded. And it was a, that was the best part. It was. You it was the it. most amazing part. You missed it. And we couldn't recreate it because yeah. we don't know what we talked about. Yeah, because it's just happening. Just is. Man, this is, uh, this takes me back to the beginning. You know you're not recording yet. Oh, you are recording. Mm -hmm. Great job. I thought we were going to do the quiet on the set thing. No, it's not as fun. Well, there's, it's for safety. It, <laughs> who's your, yes. yours or mine? Yes. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, man, the days when I first started this thing and trying to figure out what equipment, oh, it drove me crazy. I love and loathe technology all at the same time. Yeah, I love technology because it's the only reason that I'm able to afford food. Yeah, it's good in that regard. Yeah. It's good in that regard. Because if I had to do, like, manual labor and stuff, I'd be thin. <laughs> Hey, you got a little something right there. Right here? Yeah. Yep. It's probably an I, uh, here. Mm. So I could check before I'd record. That's how you look at yourself? That's how I, that's how I look at myself. <clears throat> that's how all of us it's look it's at how all of us so you know. <laughs> it's not a new thing, man. No, but I mean, like, mm. I, I would have to check before I would start recording. Yeah. Because I had a couple videos where, sure enough, right there. Oh, you would check your teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically my ah. teeth. So... 
doing like a little intro class to how to cure a humidor. I think it's called curing, right? It's like the same thing you would do. Seasoning. Season. Season, Season. it. Thank mm-hmm. you. So um, the idea is that you, you need distilled water and propylene glycol to do this. For the initial seasoning. Propylene glycol. Yeah. It's like a little clear liquid. It looks kind of like water, but it's got a cool name. It's like the fog machine stuff. Is that what they use? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I also have a fog machine in my attic. A whole other <laughs> story from a different I'd life. Love but, to. But, but anyways, so. Oh, hey, I happen to have a fog machine in my attic. Yeah. Just in case you need one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you take a wet sponge with a distilled water and you wipe down all of the cedar in here to the point where it makes it damp but not drippy wet, right? You don't want it to any loose water in there. You don't want it to be sopping in the thing, but you moisten all of the cedar wood. Then you take the sponges and you create a solution that's half distilled water and half uh, propylene glycol. And then you uh, mix it and you lay the sponges in there and let them go to fill capacity, which is the maximum amount that it can hold without it becoming drippy or stuff dripping off of it. Right? Yeah. And then you pop those back in there. You close it. You put in your humid uh, your uh, humidity pack. Humidity. Um, no, you don't need the pack when you use the sponges, um, but you have to do that like once a week. You have to reseed them, but your humid humidity reader thingy, you put that in oh, there yeah, yeah. and make sure that it stabilizes to the 69, 70%, right? Right. And then um, you know that you're good to go. Then you can start loading it with cigars. So I learned nice. that this week. Um, nice. So that's what I'm going to do to my big humidor that you got me. I appreciate So that. let me ask you this. Did you enjoy learning about it? I did. I did. Um, it was neat, and I had some of the stuff. We had to go get distilled water, oddly, was the thing that we were missing. <laughs> and I'm not even going to tell we've you. We've got the fog machine. We, we've got Jeez. the propylene glycol, but um, we didn't have the distilled water. So we thought about making distilled water, but then I thought yeah. that'd be too extra, so we didn't do that. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. That would be really yeah. cool to do. But. So it's not probably the best video that you can see on how to do it, but in my mind, it's like this. I had never done it. Sometimes whenever you even watch other people do things, um, it doesn't, you don't get a feel for it because you're watching someone who's done 50 of them or a hundred right, of them. Right. right and they're right. like, they make it look so easy. Um, so on a video for sure, we'll do this yeah. and you can see how clunky it is for normal people that just got a humidor to, uh, season their humidor and get it ready to go. So we'll, we'll season this one mm-hmm. and we'll let b right here season it for us so you can learn along with it. It's really, it's really interesting. I, yeah. I really have appreciated all of the art and artistry that goes into the world of cigars. And this is just one of those pieces. I actually, like he said, I, I sent him home with a humidor and I said, you'll have to season it. And I'm not going to tell you how to do it because I think you'll enjoy the process. And yeah, good, good to hear that you I also learned it. other things. So there's things that you can do um, on my large humidor. It has hygrometer, I yep. think it's called. And it's a dial hygrometer. And so the thing is, on you can calibrate those by using salt and distilled water. Actually, they, they use regular water for that part hmm. to set it. And um, then there's a screw inside of it that you turn it and um, set that up. And mine just pops right out and pops right back in the front. So, I don't, I so how does it. the salt water help you figure out how to set it? I think it's because... <clears throat> You, you, it's not salt water. It's a salt paste. Okay. Right? The salt is supposed to end up being pasty. And you know what? We'll do a video on that, too. I think that'd be yep. great to see people do yep. it and see if we nail it, right? Because I have the digital um, mm-hmm. hydrom- hygrometer and the dial one, so yep. we can tell them side by side. But um, basically, with uh, there's a different way to calibrate the uh, digital one, right? You can use one of those packs, mm-hmm. or you can use the salt water if you don't have a pack, right? It takes about like eight hours to do this whole thing. Um but it's a salt paste, and I'm assuming it's kind of like the packet. And what, is it, what do you call the Belveda? What do you call the this? Boveda packs? Boveda packs. Mm-hmm. So I think it's the same thing. The salt holds on to the water at the right amount. Yeah. You know, like a Boveda yeah, pack yeah. and releases it at an X rate or whatever, you know, science and all yeah. the other stuff. Right? <laughs> it's, all the, it's science. <laughs> science. Trust the science. Trust the science. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good one. You're going to be able to trust our science, though, because yeah. um, we didn't come up with the science and we're not making it up as we go. People have been smoking cigars and curing humidors for a for long time. Thousands of yeah. years. Thousands of years. Yeah. So it should be a great episode. Hope you guys tune in and watch it.